nor CV allowed. Now, today, I want to tell you something that you might have had heard before or something you knew, but because it's Rema word, it's coming to launch you into a new season. And it's a season probably uh, you were not praying for or you thought you needed to labor into, but the Lord's grace has just brought you into it regardless of what you were doing or what you were not doing. Normally when a person is looking for a new place of employment, the employer would demand a CV. You would demand a CV so that he knows the reason may of the person he or she is going to be employing and who then judge to see if the person is fit for the criteria of job or place of employment that they are offering. But in the kingdom of God, sometimes things don't go that way because the Lord can just favor you regardless of how qualified you are, what you did, what you did not, who you are connected to, who you relate to, which type of church do you go to, who prayed for you, who didn't pray for you, how many days and nights you fasted, how many scriptures you quoted during the week, how many battles you fought and conquered, how many temptations you overcame. Sometimes God just defies logic and he comes in his way and in his own unique time and does his thing as unique as he wanted to be. Mary, our mother, is a teen girl. And the teenage girl is about her business. And one day, bang, here comes an angel, Gabriel. Approaches her, and the angel Gabriel salutes her with the most astounding salutation. And he says, hey, Mary, thou art favored above all women. Now, what baffles me as the Lord was giving this revelation is, what had Mary done for her to deserve such a salutation and to be highly esteemed above all women? Mary simply did nothing. Of course, she was a virgin, but trust you me, with the Israeli customs, especially back then, there were thousands and thousands, if not millions of virgin girls that were throughout Israel. So being virgin, is not the only thing that would account to her being honored above all women. Definitely, there was something that went beyond her being a virgin. It was God's mysterious grace and order of favor. Favor is not fair, somebody said it. But good news, it's you now who is favored. It's you now who God gave access to listen to this video and to watch this telecast that God is announcing that I favored you not because you did something to end it, but because I am just being gracious to whom I will be gracious to. The girl is just about her business. The girl is not fasting as the Bible never recorded she was doing so. She's not in a long streak of prayer. She is just about her business and lo and behold, she became the mother of our Lord. One day there's a boy called David. He is managing his father's little ship business. And the, the man of God visits the house under God's instruction and tells Jesse that God is ordaining one of your sons to be king. The father was even ashamed to call him and put him in line as a candidate to becoming the king. The father had already disqualified him. His history and what the father knew about him. For sure, the parents were sure there's no way God would choose such a person. But look at what happened. He became the giant killer. He became the God, David, the king. And when Jesus came, someone shouted, have mess on me, Jesus, son of David. Can you just imagine? Can you imagine Judah, after all he had done, impregnating Tamar, his daughter-in-law, and doing what he did because he impregnated her, thinking she is a prostitute and such a lost person. One day the Lord just comes and through Jacob, he prophesies and says, Judah, you are the ones who are your brothers, who prays. And the sept of rulership will not leave your home. And Jesus comes in Revelation and says, I am the lion of the tribe of Judah. What had Judah done 
favor, grace, no CV allowed. Just enter as you are. Just be available. All he needed was to be a son of Jacob. I can give you a lot of examples. Abraham is in the land of Ura in Chaldea, just managing his own business, taking care of his family, his wife Sarah, and his brother who had left Lot in his hands. And the Lord comes in chapter 12. Now God had spoken to Abraham saying, get out of your father's house, out of your kinsfolk, and from your country to the land that I'll show you. What had he done? Grace is just not fair. He anoints Isaac, not Ishma. What had Isaac done for God to say, through Isaac, your seed will be renowned? It's because God's favor, he had just handpicked him. He takes the crook, Jacob, and endorsed the mistake that his father had made over Esau. What had Jacob done? Actually, the Bible says in Romans 9, before the two boys did anything good or bad, the Lord said, Jacob I loved, but Esau, no. So God has loved you. You are the Jacob today. You are the Isaac today. You are the Abraham. You are the Joseph today. You go to bed, and before you know it, dreams are in your spirit. And the dreams are suggesting that you are a hero. But what had you done, Joseph, for you to deserve that? Nothing at all. It is the favor, the grace of God, that's giving you the place without a CV, that's giving you the appointment without a resume, that's giving you the ordination without the qualification, because his grace has just favored you. So embrace God's grace, embrace God's favor. You are in the season where he's going to shock you like he shocked Paul the Apostle on his way to Damascus. To do what? Arrest Christians. Persecute them. Bang, the Lord appears to him. So, so why thou persecutest me? How hard it is to kick against the pricks. And so becomes Paul, a writer of 14 books of the New Testament. So you may not know it. You may rule yourself out. People might have condemned you, judged you harshly. People might have called you names. People might have uh, been vindictive on you and has misjudged you and have placed you in a place of total condemnation. But human rejection is not divine rejection. Access has been opened. Embrace grace. Sing with me today. Shout for joy and worship him. And say, thank you, Jesus, for making me a leader to my family, for making me a priest to my people, for making me an answer to many people that I don't even know yet. Because God sent me to tell you that his favor has just located you, regardless of where you were, regardless of what you were doing. It was all by his grace and mercy. May God richly bless you. I'll see you in the next episode. And chew this one, meditate, uh, regurgitate, and embrace the favor that has been freely given to you. Amen.